Did you shoot your parents? No. Either one of them? No. You're not a murderer? I'm not a murderer. Madison Holton, high school senior, accused killer, distraught parents, a rebellious teen, a family meeting explodes into violence. That situation goes from calm to murder in 11 minutes? Yeah. I mean, it's homicide. I didn't hurt either of my parents. I don't think anybody's jumping up and down about having to put a 17-year-old boy in the Two puzzling deaths. One riveting mystery. I'm Lester Holt, and this is Dateline. Here's Josh Mankiewicz with 11 Minutes. The long road of parenthood. Always watching as your kid this world in one piece. Madison Holton was born a handful. His parents, April and Michael, could barely keep up. Madison was always the... We had a birdhouse that my mom had brought over, and she was going to put it in my backyard. The other kids, run, go, play, have fun, you know, oh, mom needs help, whatever. Not available. Not available. Madison's like, hey, do you want me to help you do it? School was a battlefield. Madison was picked on, the scrawny kid, six feet, and had less time for dad and mom. Madison was very social. He had a lot of friends. Hannah Trailer and Madison grew up in the tiny town of Eclectic, Alabama. He was always like the class clown, like really goofy, trying to make everybody laugh. Themselves without a map. During senior year, people are turning 18, they're about to graduate high school. You know, he was just like any of the other kids that thought like, oh, I'm about to gain freedom and I'm just going to like push my boundaries a little bit. Madison had started hanging out with a group of friends, but I feel like too, that group of friends kind of opened a door. This road might take her son. So she begged her brother Chris, a police officer, to talk some sense into Madison. And I sat down with him, and I had a long talk with him, and I said, look, this is not the lifestyle you want to choose. At the same time Madison was going through his teenage rebellion, his parents, April and Mike, and on September 11th, 2016, he blew it. While his dad was at work, Madison threw a house party. Someone else called Michael and said, my kid came home from your house under the influence of something, and I want to know why. So Michael's embarrassed at that point. Michael calls up and says, you need to get to my house. we got to protect in eclectic. He was the former mayor, the former fire chief, very well known. How dare you embarrass me in this community? Uh, So I'm sure he was pissed. I don't blame him. I'd be pissed, too, if my child had thrown a party. When Michael Holton walked into the house, he found the remnants of a teenage party. Homemade bongs were scattered. dippity up there. Bill Franklin is sheriff of Elmore County, and the deputy sent to the house that day happened to be his son. When Deputy Franklin arrived, Michael had something to say. Mr. Holton actually greeted him in the yard and told him, hey, when you come in, I was, you're going to But I don't think that his intent was to harm or hurt the kid. He was, he was merely trying to see what he could do to try to get his attention. To me... Putting a kid in handcuffs says either I'm disciplining you and I'm serious about this or I'm afraid of you. Possible that that's what was going on there? Could have been. Michael asked the deputy how, as parents, they could get the juvenile courts involved. He was very, I would say, inquisitive about what could he do to uh, paperwork-wise to get his child uh, in front of a judge so he could talk to the judge about the problems that he was experiencing with the child. So made a solution. They pretty much reached their wits in, one of those things. But these were not people who were in the midst of some huge fight. No, no, not at all. The deputy left Michael and April with instructions about how to get a copy of the police report the next day, a Monday. He leaves and supposedly everything's okay. And then 11 men fired. Only three people had been in that home. And now one of them was dead. Another lay dying. What had happened? in just 11 minutes. When we come back, what would police find inside that house? We noticed trauma forced for 39 years. I have never seen such a bizarre way to, to do that.
lay on the bedroom floor, a pistol between them. All arriving deputies knew for sure was that the situation had escalated in almost no time at all. About 4.48, our deputy leaves. Uh, 4.59, we receive another 911 call. So whatever happens, it happens in 11 minutes. Altercation. Madison told investigators it all started as soon as the deputy who'd been there about the house party left. After his parents came back in, after speaking with the deputy, they went into the bedroom and became involved in a physical fight. Does Madison say what the fight was about? Or what sparked the fight? I believe the... Bolton was dead by the time deputies arrived. Madison's mom was unconscious, but breathing. So investigators' first thought was Mr. Holton shot his wife and then himself. From what we had been told, you would think that he actually shot her, Mr. Holton. First, as if she put it up to protect herself. And then as she turned her face away from the gun, she was shot in the head. Michael's injuries appeared self-inflicted. And we noticed trauma, what appeared to be blood trauma in his mouth. The first formulated thought is, well, he probably shot himself in the mouth. April and Michael got together in high school. They married after graduation and pretty quickly became the parents of three kids. She was all about her kids all the time. I always kind of thought she was like this do-it-all kind of mom. Made it seem effortless. Fixture in eclectic. You couldn't go around town without him being recognized. He'd worked his way up from paramedic to fire chief and then mayor. Everyone knew him, knew him as a leader. He was always very nice, very funny, very, you know, very easygoing. He and April seemed happy. Yeah, yes. Nice to her, he didn't talk to her like he would talk to someone you love. Tanya says April felt she couldn't do anything right in the marriage. By summer 2016, she was done. April filed paperwork for a divorce. I think she was at peace with her decision. September 11th, 2016, April only answered Michael's call because the latest family crisis was about Madison. Obviously, Madison had thrown a party, and so they had to talk to Madison about it. And she was like, I'm going to have to go over there. Sounds like she didn't want to go over to Mike's. No. In a fit of sorrow and rage, that's what it looked like to investigators at first. So when you finally actually move his body. We discovered what appeared like an, an entry wound to the back of his head. So that's the first false note here. That changed the dynamics of the investigation. I've been in law enforcement for 39 years. Mr. Holton did shoot his wife and then turn the gun on himself. Why such a bizarre way to, to do that? The next morning, a state pathologist confirmed Michael Holton had a close contact wound at the base of his head. And to investigators, the angle... Angle it, because remember, the angle is upward. Upside down and using his left hand. The thing about that is, Michael Holton was right-handed. Normally, when men commit suicide, they use their dominant hand, sure, not their weaker hand. That's right. To the sheriff and his investigators, believed that that man would have killed himself or would have been able to kill himself in that manner. And so you go forward with a homicide investigation. It's not a head scratcher. You, you get a piece of paper that says homicide. This was now a murder investigation. And if there were three people in that house and two were victims, that simpler will police believe it he didn't seem that upset no no he seemed more concerned about a missing homecoming when dateline continues being vigil in the icu their sister had been shot in the head and there was little doctors could do you see it in the movies with the machine breathing for the person. and This is far more surreal than what it seems like in the movies. So it's, this is goodbye, and though there is no more hellos, there's no more hugs, there's no more phone calls, there's no more... One person who did not get to say goodbye was April's oldest son. Madison was now a murder suspect. He'd been questioned that morning at the sheriff's office. After one round of the interrogation, the sheriff asked Madison's uncle, Chris, to join them. 
There's a reason he's in. I've not seen any evidence. Here's what Madison says happened after the first deputy left. My dad, like, signaled my mom to come into the room, and she did, and he shut the door. After about five minutes, you say you heard your mom? Scream help. Scream help. Okay, what did you do? I jumped up to my neighbor's house. Madison said he didn't see or hear what happened next, not even the gunshots while he was at his neighbor's house. The sheriff wasn't buying that one bit. Will you agree with me that there was a gunshot fired? I mean, that, that, as of what I've been told, yes. But you never heard that? No, sir. I don't know. I didn't hurt either of my parents. No, no. The doctor down there says they didn't shoot themselves. I don't care if the doctor says I didn't shoot my parents. And Madison's own uncle, an officer himself, knew the significance of this moment. This will be the only time you walked in there and your dad's got your mama by the throat and you did what you thought you had to do. So maybe Madison shot his dad to protect his mom? That sounds almost like you're offering him a story that you know fits the evidence and is also exculpatory. Well, at that point, though, I had not seen any evidence. He was shot through the hand, through the head, which is a defensive position. Back in the interrogation room, Madison stuck to his version of events. I've already told y'all everything that I know. I've told y'all everything that I know. As the interrogation was wrapping up and the sheriff and Chris were walking out, Madison made homecoming on the way to take a blood sample. He seemed more concerned about a missing homecoming, the uh, school, and things of that nature. He didn't seem that upset? No, no. And here's a call that was recorded from jail a few days later. Damn, I'm a murderer. That kind of talk didn't prove anything, but it did strike investigators as odd as they continued gathering evidence. They decided to test some elements of Madison's story. Madison had said he didn't hear the gunshots. So law enforcement did an experiment. Ran from his dad's house to a neighbor, 200 feet away. And that he didn't hear the shots on his way or once he arrived. Investigators listened closely. Here's what that test sounded like standing at the neighbor's front door. To investigators, that made Matt begin a process that might have resulted in him being locked up, and he got angry, and he decided to kill them. I don't know what his mindset was there, but could that have, you know, triggered him? Sure, it could have. By the end of the week, 17-year-old Madison Holton was charged with murdering his mom and... Walks, talks, feels, and smells like a duck. We're pretty much going to treat it like a duck. Madison says... He was no one sitting duck. My opinion is they picked a fight. They thought they picked out some weak-minded kid they didn't know who they were playing with. You're tougher than they thought you were. Madison stands by. He didn't do it. It's not possible. I knew, like, he wasn't capable of that. That is on every iPhone in class. I'm on Snapchat all the time. So when I'm scrolling through Snapchat, and then you see his mugshot pop up on Daily Mail, and you click through, and then he's next to Kim Kardashian. That in itself was absolutely crazy for me, for my classmates, like all of us. And I knew, like, he wasn't capable of long if there wasn't something pointing towards him. The sheriff believed that when Madison realized his parents were about to take him to juvenile court, he killed them and then lied about it to investigators. The sheriff also believed some time in jail might encourage Madison to come clean. There's a lot of what they did. That, however, did not happen. Not as the teenager sat in the county lockup. And not when he sat down to talk with us. Did you shoot your parents? No. Either one of them? No. You ever have your hands on that gun that day? No. You hear any gunshots when you're on your way over to the neighbor? No, I didn't. Fall apart. Whenever things started to fall down, it just got worse and worse. Could you tell there was tension in the house? Yeah. Sometimes I could, sometimes I couldn't. Sometimes they would be giving the, each other the silent treatment. Sometimes they would be arguing in front of us. But most of the time, it's more of 
like behind closed doors, like that. So I mean, I couldn't do it at home when my parents were around. So I decided to go other places. After his parents separated, Madison lived with his dad, and was present when his father discovered April had a new boyfriend. He like freaked out, and then he called her, and was like going off on her about it, saying he was bawling. Madison was remembering all of this sitting in jail, months and months, contemplating the past. You wrote people letters, yeah, apologizing. In some cases, for things you've done. Yeah. Dear Hannah, I know it's kind of weird getting a letter from me, right? and you know, like in the letter, he like apologizes for something that happened, like back in ninth grade, just because he wanted to like apologize to everybody that he had wronged. I guess like he was just reflecting on a lot of stuff. But every person I've written, I've told the exact same thing. I'm not a murderer. I don't know if you believe me or not, but I'm not. I couldn't kill anybody. And then like, like really crazy to see that. I would just think about the light at the end of the tunnel, you know. My favorite Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, is like, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You still thought you had a future? I knew I had a future. Madison's present changed from the one he told the night his parents were shot. I think I asked like three or four times for a polygraph. I just want to be set up for a polygraph test, honestly. Like, hey, as soon as y'all can do it, I want a polygraph test. Okay. Generally, guilty people do not ask for polygraphs. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I didn't know nothing about it. I just knew it was a lot of taker tests. That polygraph never happened, and Madison remained a teenager facing two murder raps. Law enforcement was lined up against him. His mom's family felt differently. They saw Madison behind bars. Prison for life. Prefer on a house party. Mike hadn't even known Madison well before all of this. Before everything happened, I never really even had like more than like a five minute conversation with him. Uh, but whenever I got to the jail, I mean, we'd sit there and talk on the phone till the time ran up on the phone. And he was pretty solidly sir, and was now hunting for anything that might prove Madison's innocence. He didn't do it. It's not possible. Coming up, a former FBI agent joins the case. This is the same make and model of gun. Same make as the 38 Cobra. With some intrigue. Two life sentences is a long time for anyone. When you're 17, it's unthinkable. Behind bars, Madison Holton prayed for the light at the end of the tunnel. Three or four months. Where'd you get the money for Madison's bond? My wife and I took out a loan, and we're still paying for it. After um, 15 months and seven days, the guard said, today's your lucky day, pack it up. Madison was out, but far from free. Now he was prepping for a murder trial with Z Report. Michael Holton was under the influence of heavy narcotics. Michael Holton had a cocktail of tramadol, oxycodone, and hydrocodone in his system at the time of his death. Was pretty much everybody in your family aware that Michael had a drug problem? They they were. It was something nobody wanted to talk about. And it's an embarrassment. Right. It just down the hill he went. Chris speculated that on the day of the shootings, Michael was using the latest problem with their son as a way to win April back. It's an opportunity for Michael to say, look, you know, if the two of us were together, this probably wouldn't have happened. And she says it's too late for that conversation. I couldn't face the world knowing he killed his wife, and the only option left for him was to end his own life. Mike learned Madison's dad might have thought about suicide in the past. It was right there in the pages of his diary. To April, he wrote, I just can't go on knowing you were with somebody else. And discoveries with his court-appointed attorney. And they worried. The family didn't have money for fancy experts or the things they would need to make a strong case. As his uncle stressed, Madison went to church. And that's where everything changed in the form of Greg Biggs. He drew my name out and he drew Madison's name out. Did you know Madison? I had no idea. But I got to meet him that day and he was a nice kid. He was only a few days later, his uncle Chris tells me, well, you know, he's indicted for murder. I'm going, what? 
Madison? Greg is a former FBI aide. We're off base. But his parents have just been killed, and he's, what, talking about homecoming? I don't think you can put, get yourself in the mind of a 17-year-old to make him out to be a Ted Bundy when he's just a kid. I mean, I, I did a lot of stupid things when I was 17. I kissed a dead dog on a saying stupid things. And if law enforcement didn't catch Madison in tears, Madison said he had a good reason and said as much in the interrogation. I can't even cry because it hurts so bad because it just keeps replaying in my head. Greg is on his face. And if Madison had shot them during the fight, where was the proof of that? No DNA, no blood on Madison. Not on his clothes, not on his hands. So all the, the evidence points toward exactly what Madison said. Mom and Dad were in the bedroom. If Madison had... At a very close range. Law enforcement was never able to lift a full print from the gun. And the only DNA they found was April's on the trigger. And what about that head wound? The one a pathologist said made Michael's death look like a homicide? I've consulted with a forensic pathologist who said he'd look shoot himself at that odd angle. Defense attorney Biggs demonstrated for us how easy it could be using an unloaded gun identical to the one found at the scene. This is the same make and model of gun. Same make as the 380 Cobra. Not impossible, is it? Remember, Madison's dad had handcuffed him behind his back. And when deputies arrived after the shootings, they found Madison still in those handcuffs. My hands were like this on my back last night. I couldn't move them. The sheriff's theory? Madison had been able to take the cuffs off. Investigator is in his late 40s. They were both able, in about 12 to 15 seconds, stand up, slip it below their feet, get in front of them, take a handcuff key that's been placed right in front of them, and get out of the handcuffs. Wait, wait, wait. That's what you think Madison did? Out of the handcuffs? <laughs> no. And, and commit murder and then put the handcuffs back on? No. Would you know how to do that? No. It was the first time I had ever been put in handcuffs. The state was moving ahead. A date for Madison's double murder trial was set. They seem pretty determined. Yeah, they seem pretty determined to have two life sentences and be in prison for the rest of my life. The jaw-dropping news that no one expected. Did you have your suspicions about what was coming? No. That's what happened in eclectic Alabama after the killing of April and Michael Holton. Each side felt they knew what had happened on that September afternoon in 2016. To County Sheriff Bill Franklin, it was clear. Madison Holton killed his parents. The sheriff's investigators said Madison could have gotten out of his handcuffs and committed a double murder. The lack of blood on him was also easy to explain. It was a small caliber weapon, and a small caliber weapon doesn't cause a whole lot of initial damage to a person. So it's conceivable that Madison was involved in that shooting and it was that first deputy on the scene. The conversation that he'd had with the deputy, uh, I don't think anyone would agree that the man, well, is going to go in there and he's fisting to kill his wife and kill himself. He was very clear-minded. Did your deputy in that initial encounter with Mr. Holton describe him or think of him as being October 22nd, 2018, the first day of Madison's murder trial? This is the start of war, you know? Madison, who'd always been so convinced he would be found not guilty, was worried. He'd found a new girlfriend while out on bond and told her this. If this goes downhill, I'm going to tell her that, you know? In court, attorneys were about to start the last phase of jury selection. When suddenly the mood in the room seemed to shift. People running all over the courthouse back and forth. The sheriff was there, too, waiting for proceedings to begin. Did you have your suspicions about what... Two years of investigating, prosecutors had decided they didn't have enough. We are ethically obligated at this point to dismiss those charges. If this had been a battle, then the DA had just retreated. 
the murder charges were dismissed, just like that, in a 100% sure. The most they could say was it's more likely than not a homicide, which is not beyond a reasonable doubt. And so the answers Eclectic was waiting for never came. The son was was released not too long ago, and that's about all I know about, about the case. Kicking back with their guitars and just playing music. Tanya says she thought of April every day throughout Madison's ordeal. Finding out that Madison was released and that it was done, I feel like she's finally at peace. She can be at peace because for her babies to be in turmoil. It's an open case. As long as I'm sheriff, that's open case. You could refile against Madison. Absolutely. Which is why Madison doesn't want to discuss the specifics of the case. He's not cleared. He's just not charged. From everything that I've been through, I have no doubt in my mind that the sheriff will try to put me back in jail. I don't live out the rest of his life as a free man. He received his high school diploma while out on bond. Now his plan is to eventually go on to college and then law school and become a criminal defense attorney. You ready to go back in a courtroom? Oh, yeah. Maybe not wearing handcuffs. Yeah. I want to find that kid. I mean, it's not about the money. It's about that one life out there that could be saved. They are dreams Madison shares with his mother when he goes to visit her grave. She's buried right next to his dad. I mean, you're visiting her grave, but he's five feet away or less. Mm -hmm. When you go. I'm sorry. I love her. That's all for...